It says it's streaming live on Facebook. Are we streaming live? Hey, Alderman move your head back and forth. Alderman Hartman, can you hear us? Yes, uh, Mayor, I can hear you just fine. Sounds good. That was just a picture. It might be. He sits too still. Let me give him some coffee before he starts this. We good? All right, we'll call the Board of Alderman work session to order. First item on the agenda is discussion of city tow services. I believe Chief here up for this one or Cynthia or combination of that's not here. Okay. Um a couple meetings ago. Um I'm gonna three or four now, actually time flies. Is that better? Okay, thank you. Uh, we had we had a renewal for uh, the extension on, and uh, an alderman asked to um, what's the correct term, Linda? Um, table it? No, not table it. Postpone. Yeah, uh, the item for further discussion. Then there was a further discussion. We went ahead and exercised the one year first one year extension out of the contract that we currently have. And uh, at that time, um, the board as a whole asked that uh, this be brought back for further discussion. And I think we've done a pretty good job in, in your in your uh, packet outlining kind of the last few meetings and kind of a little bit of history on it. Um, we can go back further in history if you need to, if you have any questions. And, um, you know, it's been staff's recommendation to, to follow uh, the current contract. And then once it's up, follow the, uh, the bid process as usual and uh, proceed from there. So I guess it's really, I guess I'm here to answer questions if you all have them or if you want to have a discussion when we sit down, I'll be more than happy to do that too. So are what you are saying that what, what we have one more year after this current one that we yeah, just Yeah, this current right? one that we just extended, I think. So two months um, ago, that's that's the first extension. The contract allows for two. So there will be another one coming up. Um, probably like, was it August, September? August, September-ish, yeah, with where the math works. So what you're um, wanting to look at doing is maybe going ahead and just renewing that contract that's going to be coming up. When, when that, well... Assuming there's no concerns at that okay. time, yeah, um, and that's how we we look at these every time they come around. Okay. Um, we make sure there's been no problems, no concerns, everything's working like it should. Uh, if there are, uh, then we'll we'll address them. And if at that time we need to make a recommendation to go out for bid, then we would. Assuming there's no there's no further concerns, um, the recommendation would be to, to follow the contract as written, and then a full bid process after that, which would be called for anyway because i know what happened i think with this having this discussion now is we couldn't um do what was asked before because we were already past that deadline so it's yeah just when, a when reminder post, for us we, that's going to be coming we, up yeah we postponed it to talk about it kind of pushed it past a past a deadline there that's outlined in the contract um so that's why um miss wagner wanted to put this on early we'll get this out of the way and um, we'll have that if if that's the way we go we'll have that well in front of you all Plenty of time in advance. Maybe May, June. I'm, I'm, I would think that would be a better time frame. Okay, thank you. What, whatever my boss is good with, I'm good with. So. And in the last contract, sorry, in the last contract, they actually reduced the rate. Um, how often? I mean, do we have stats? Do we even use this monthly right now? Weekly? Uh, we do. I believe we're averaging about uh, for police tows about two a week. Okay. Um, that doesn't include like accidents where somebody asks for a tow or anything like that. That's typically that is um, somebody's arrested and the vehicle can't be left where it's right. at, or if a vehicle's left and is impounded and towed. And accidents and things like that, they can use whatever tow service they want. This is just our tow, when we call for a tow truck. Yes, as a general rule, there are some exceptions and accidents. If somebody wants to use a tow service that say is going to be an hour away, right. we, got, we got to clear the road. That's a different story. But that's rare. That happens a handful of times in a year. Yeah, because one, um, one of the questions I've had is why doesn't this rate apply to this rate apply when they get a insurance tow? And so this mm -hmm. this is our rate for our tows. That's a that's a private business. That's not outlined in the contract. That's right. and I don't I don't I don't think we have a leg to stand on to meddle in that. To be honest with you, but perfect. I do have one more way. question. Sure. When I was reading through um, the service considerations where it talked access. 
I'm on my phone just a second, okay. to the tow lot mm -hmm. any time that uh, law enforcement personnel would need that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm assuming, and maybe that's not the right word to use, that there could be occasions whenever you need that access that you would need a warrant before you could go back into a vehicle. Would that be correct? Uh, there are times that that happens. Um, it, okay. And so when if, you it's, have if that... it's involved in a crime, then generally we, we will go get a warrant. Um, we will consult with the prosecuting attorney on all okay. those cases beforehand. Um, sometimes it's as simple as an officer forgot to write down a VIN number. We need to get access and look at the VIN number as well. I just or, wanted to make um, sure in those situations where you did have to have that search warrant oh, yeah. is yep. when you're there and it, you're, it's available 24-7, yep. if it's after hours and nobody mm -hmm. from the tow company is there, do you let them know that you need that access and you have to do it with a search warrant? We do. And typically with a warrant, um, we can plan those and those are okay. um, uh, during normal business hours. Um, if it wasn't, if it was outside of a Monday through Friday, normal business hours, it's probably going to be during the daytime anyway, on like on a weekend, if it warrants okay. it on a, on a criminal matter. I won't say it'll never happen overnight, um, but typically those things that, that roll out like that, they're going to be so involved. We got a pretty good handle on the time frame and okay. if it's two three in the morning and we're getting a warrant and that was just the first thing typically we're not gonna wake a judge up two or three in the morning well, for that anyway so I would we hope be not either but just just when i read that that's yeah. the first thing that come to mind it's, it's just not like it's just open access mm -hmm. so okay no no Thank no you. it's not just I don't, I don't have a key to the place no it's just we call them up we make arrangements and, and typically we're making an appointment for it as well okay thank mm -hmm. you yep any other questions for chief Dan, you're on line. You got anything? Yeah, yeah no, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Chief, for putting this report together. And I concur with Alderman Wilson. I, I think we just, uh, you know, keep moving forward and and uh, potentially, uh, you know, at this point, I certainly don't have a problem with extending it, but we'll consider it in May, June timeframe. We'll look at it again. But at this point, um, I appreciate Chief providing us a report. And I'll, I'll leave it out there. Any questions come up later, you're more welcome to contact me. I'll do my best to answer them as quick as I can. Thank you. Chuck, it's all you, brother. If I, I may, for sound, one sound sec. Sad. Yeah. Sounded sad. <laughs> Mayor, he's going to ask for money. <laughs> A lot of zeros on some of these numbers. <laughs> Did you have comment? Did... I was just going to say um, we have a lot of projects um, in the planning and construction phase, um, design phase, prep for bidding. So you'll see these. We're in winter planning mode. Um, over the next several months, we'll have a lot of projects put out to bid um, and proceed in projects that are included in the budget. So Chuck's providing that update tonight. We've also talked for quite some time about the um, project on the south end of town for the sewer project, 144th Street um, sewer lift station. Um, and Chuck's going to talk about that as well as another project we've anticipated financing that project with certificates of participation. Um, and as I said, we've talked about that for a while. We had we actually had anticipated issuing that debt last fall. Um, but we continue to work and Chuck's going to talk in, in detail about, about this time, so not Trying to take your limelight too much. Well, weren't but. we originally? I mean, we can even go back further than that. We were planning on going out for debt for the pump station in 2022. Right. Mm -hmm. And we deferred mm -hmm. that debt because we got changed the grant the funds and changed the project. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we continue. So Chuck's going to provide yeah. update on that. After Chuck's presentation, he'll talk to this as well. We've asked Hannah Draper from, excuse me, Hannah Snyder, <laughs> sorry, um, from Piper Jaffrey, our financial advisor. A number of you have not been through the process of sale of bonds. And so she's going to talk through that process and the timeline as well. So we want to make sure we got all that information to you all because there is an item on the agenda tonight for the go to market. Um, it is the next step in that process, basically outlining our intent to finance these projects. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chuck. Well, I was going to be real brief because I thought the chief was going to be long winded. So, but now I got like an hour, so we can go into these as much as you, you want. You have like 40 minutes, <laughs> tops. Chuck always likes to talk. So, so you can see the good old days when the sun was shining and we were wearing short sleeve shirts and 
Don, it's been cold this last week. And first thing I have to say is thank you to the utility crews and our street crews for their work last week. Um, the street crews were out all Monday and Tuesday. Um, we split shifts the first time they did that so we could keep not only overtime down, but we could keep people here working throughout the night. Um, they worked continuously from, I think, 10 on Monday because we brought them in late all the way through till about five or six on Tuesday. So they were here quite a long time. And then our water crews this weekend, we didn't want to leave them out in the cold. So we had a couple water main breaks that they could fix. And that was nasty work. So you've got to give them a lot of thanks um, for all the work that they did. Um, like Cynthia mentioned, really, I just wanted to concentrate on two projects. Um, but we've got a lot of information in the staff report. I'm going to run through a lot of projects real quick. Um, the Commercial Street Sidewalk Project and then our 144th Street and Stonebridge Project. So if you want to flip to the next. Can I do it? You think? Click it. Move it. No, no, oh, outside. Here. Where'd it go? The back? Just click. Oh, he, 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 he other clicked it, so yeah. He right clicked instead of left click. Can I just roll? Okay. Oops. All right, let's go back one. <clears throat> so, we did send letters out to everybody along our commercial street sidewalk project. Um, this is basically a sidewalk that's going to go from the south end of the school district property, uh, connect to the sidewalk there, and then it's going to go all the way down to Meadow. It's basically a six foot sidewalk when we're separated from the curb and when we're on the back of the curb, we'll make it seven foot. <clears throat> um, this project does have some federal funding in it. Um, right now we have 500,000 in federal funds, 250 in city funds, the estimates 1.2. So like uh, Streetscape, we are searching for additional funding. Hopefully we will get that and then we'll be able to proceed with the project. We did send letters out to all the adjacent property owners and are you are you one of them? Please sign in so I get your name and contact information. Um, this is going to be pretty high level, um, but we do want to be able to contact everybody and talk more specifically about their properties and how we're going to impact them. Right now, where we're at is basically the preliminary design. Um, we've sent that into MoDOT for approval um, so that we could go ahead. They got to do a, a preliminary review. They look at the Proposed easements um, that we'll need for the project, um, keeping all the road in the right of way or all the sidewalk in the right of way. Um, but we will need some temporary easements so we can fix people's driveways and tie their yards back in and um, just have room for the people to work. We're not asking for a big easement area. Um, I think the majority of it is like a five foot temporary easement. <laughs> um, but this is basically kind of the layout. Um, as we go further north, <clears throat> Um, you see, as we get past Walker Street, the, the yellowish line on the back side of the sidewalk is where we're going to need some type of retaining wall, either behind the sidewalk or under the sidewalk as you get closer down to Summit and Wood Street because the yards sit lower than the sidewalk. So we'll have railing as well in those areas. Um, most of that will be on the back of the back of the curb just because there's just not much room there. <clears throat> um, some examples of the retaining walls, depending on the situation and when we talk with the property owners, depending on you know what they want and we want to make sure it looks right. Um, just some different examples of the retaining walls that we'll be putting in. The other thing is is when we get down between woods and meadow, <clears throat> we're going to have to move the curb uh, to the west. Um, there's not enough right of way be behind the current curb um, to put the sidewalk, and that would push the sidewalk like right up into people's, I mean, those yards are a lot shorter. Um, there are also some trees in the way that we just don't wanna have to tear down. Um, they're big trees and they're nice trees for shade and stuff. So we'll move that uh, to, the, to the west. We'll put the sidewalk on the back of the curb there, and we'll repair everybody's driveways and stuff. And, um, the issue then becomes parking. So we'll have to take a look at the width of the, uh, basically the commercial street in that area and see if we can still accommodate parking. 
Um, if not, we may have to el eliminate parking on that east side. Um, it'll still be available on the west side. So we'll just have to take a look at that when we get to that point. Um, <clears throat> we will be talking, after we get the clearance from MoDOT, we'll be talking to all the property owners. And I've got my card over here as well, if, if please take one of those. Um, we'll be talking to them in terms of the easements and what we're doing on their project property specifically, and we'll get them a set of the plans. But this was just kind of a quick overview so everybody kind of knows what's going on. So our big project last year was the raw water pump station, the Smith's Fork sewer pump station. Those projects have been in service um, for quite a while now. They're running fine. We have some very minor things that we're asking the contractor to finish before we close the project out. A hose here, uh, you know, the door doesn't close just right there. and um, Just a few little issues, but that seems to be working very well. So we've had no issues or no problems with that project. <clears throat> Our river crossing, um, that is right now being designed. Um, it's gonna go across Heritage Park there, um, cross the river and then head north tying in up on Maple Street. Um, that project should be bid probably in March, I'm gonna say. Um, we've got a lot of projects that are bidding in February and March. <clears throat> this was our SBR cleaning project. We came to the board back in August. Yeah, in August when we reported that we had ammonia levels that were exceeding our DNR, our permit limits. And one of the issues was that these haven't been cleaned for a long time. And um, you can see the before pictures with all the stuff in there and then the after picture. And those black areas is just wetness, it's water, it's all cleaned out. Um, Screws did a lot of that work. Um, we replaced, uh, some of them we did the influent valves, we cleaned diffusers, uh, we had motor pumps to repair. So basins one and two are totally done um, and our ammonia levels are back within compliance, almost non-detectable. Um, SBR three, we're waiting on the motive pump to get uh, here and put in, um, but the basin has been cleaned, diffusers and everything. So that should be up and running as well. Um, I gave you basically a breakdown um, in the report that you can see um, what we had anticipated the costs were gonna be and then what the costs were. Um, so you can see where that project ended up. <clears throat> our CIP project, which is our cured in place pipe project. Um, the before picture um, is clay tile. You can see the cracks in the clay tile that leads to infiltration and other issues and problems. And then after we put this plastic liner inside it, it's a nice smooth uh, plastic pipe that doesn't leak. So we don't get a lot of infiltration. Um, on the agenda this evening, um, we have this year's uh, project um, for the board's consideration. <clears throat> streetscape phase three, that project is basically the downtown streetscape theme. It's gonna be on Bridge Street from Church to First Street. Um, we got additional funding for that. So we've got almost $1.5 million um, in federal funds for that project. Um, we are doing a little bit of um, redesign there at the intersection and we're pulling the water line out. The water line will be um, bid here in the next month or so, and we'll bring that to you as a separate project and try and get that up and out of the way. Um, it wasn't eligible for federal funding anyway, so it was all on our dime. Um, but if we can get that done, then it just kind of keeps keeps the project moving. Um, and then this will be rebid probably in February. Um, it has to go through the MARC process and the, uh, the TIP, the Transportation Improvement Program. Um, it is out right now for public comment, but the um, total transportation committee has to finally make the approval on it. Um, and that doesn't happen until after the public um, hearing process or it's out for public input um, process. So um, that should be moving along. We did already do the, um, I think it was last meeting, um, we already approved the agreement with MoDOT, so the funding's secured. Wrong way. <clears throat> oh, I didn't bring it in. Anyway, I got a picture of it. So 4th Street and 4th Terrace, um, we had talked at the last meeting about, you know, the asphalt plants closed. We got 4th Street, we got the base course down. We still need the top course put on, and that's still the case, and that won't happen until the spring. But I mentioned the possibility of going concrete, and I think we sent an email out to the board said, 
it's fourteen thousand dollars we're gonna go for it and we got it done um so it was open um and it's all concrete and we got the blankets off and people are using it um, i do want to express my sincere appreciation for all the residents in the area this was a hard project they had no access to the properties <laughs> Um, they parked all over the place and walked for months um, while we did the water line, the sewer line, the storm sewer. Um, yeah, we did a lot of work up there. So, but they, they were they were troopers. They they got through it with us. Toward the end, when they saw that the roads were almost done, there were a couple antsy people. Um, you know, they just anticipation. They want to get on it. It looks done, um, and we got it open so everybody had access for Christmas um, and we got Fourth Street completed. That is an actual picture of the water line that was replaced that came off of Fourth Street at Spelman. Um, yeah, it was a two inch line that fed a dozen homes. I don't know how they got water through that, but um, that's what we replaced. And we've got an eight inch line up there now. So, um, and we'll come back in the spring. We got to put the top lift down. We got to do a lot of cleanup. We got to grade their yards. You know, we got to finish up some things, but um, the roads are open. Street maintenance program is going to be in Harborview this year. Those are the roads we're anticipating uh, working on um, based on the PCI for the area. Um, and then our sidewalk maintenance program will be in the same area. We will probably only be able to address the um, sidewalk issues that are city infrastructure, you know, around uh, manholes or storm sewer inlets or stuff like that. Um, we may not have much funding available to do any kind of cost share on the rest of them, but the sidewalks are in fairly good shape except for around these manholes, ADA ramps and stuff like that up there. So, um, but that's what we're gonna try and do. When we come to an area, we're gonna try and get it fixed up so we don't have to come back. Um, you know, we don't want to put a nice overlay on there and then drive over it and over and over it with um, skid steers and concrete trucks and everything else tearing it up. So, And then all of our other projects. So winter and woods, <laughs> maybe we'll get that done. <laughs> um, it's a marked project. Um, those are the two streets that we picked. We were supposed to do that. We replaced the water line up there. Um, and we just left it concrete because we knew this project was coming. Um, they got a bid. Um, Superior Bowen is the contractor that's doing our portion of the work. Um, they'll have pre-construction meetings here in the next couple of months, and we should have that done this summer. So <clears throat> a Stonebridge storm sewer um, on the agenda tonight is contract with GBA. Um, to replace that storm sewer. We had a collapse on that storm sewer, and then we've had some flooding issues of some of the uh, townhomes in the area. So we're working on getting um, a revised diameter, I guess, size for the culvert that goes under Stonebridge. Um, and then we'll see what we need to do as far as working with the school district as well, if they need to do anything on that. Quincy Avenue, <clears throat> kind of the same shape as um, 4th Street. We got the water and the storm sewer complete. Um, the, the sidewalk is partially dug up, but it's not going to get poured anytime soon. Um, but all that road work in the street and the sidewalk work will be done next spring. Um, our bar screen, we got that out to bid. We received bids the 23rd, so next Tuesday. Um, they're telling us 11 to 12 months before we can get that equipment in um, is what we're hearing. So we'll see when we get the bids, how that works out. The OK Trails, another project we got uh, funding from um, DNR, their trails program. Uh, it's a half mile of 10 foot concrete trail uh, from W Highway to Lake Meadows. Um, right now we're just in the preliminary design. We're actually doing the NEPA process, which is the environmental process right now, and working on that. Water plant residuals um, is on the agenda tonight. Um, we got really good bids on that. We had a $400,000 budget. Um, the low bid came in at 188. Um, all this is in the RFA, but um, the contractor, we've checked his references. He's done some work for other communities um, and it was all good. So um, yeah, that bid came in really good. So. And then our water plant improvements, um, filter rehab, valve replacements, and additional work items. That bid's February 6th. We have our pre-bid next week, 
January 23rd, and our Smith Fork Force Main. So we got a nice new lift station, pump station, um, but you know that we're only getting a little bit at the other end that it's pumping out of. So we're working with the core, um, trying to get that project up and running. Um, it'll bid in the spring as well. Chuck, can I ask a question? Yep. <clears throat> Back to that bar screen, you're going to get those bids. Mm -hmm. and you're talking about 11 to 12 months out. I guess, is that on the part itself? That is on what? the bar screen. It comes as one big piece of equipment. Okay. okay. So I guess if we open the bids now, mm -hmm. um, how much give, I guess, is there uh, of that possibly increasing in price? I mean, we have no way of knowing. Would that be correct? I'm just thinking of like streetscape, what happened here, what we thought it was going to be, and what the bids came in, and well, this things. would be will the that be bid. So, the so no matter would, what. Yeah, it's kind of like okay. when you buy a car, if it's not in stock and you buy the car, and they'll say, we'll get it to you in six months, it's still that price. Okay, I just wanted to. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Now, I say that, but on the raw water pump station, they bid the project, and the generator people came back and said, mm -hmm. $7,000 more, take it or leave it. So, but this will be the contractor and the equipment supplier are supposed to get together on this. Give us their price, even though it's going to take 11 months. So they should give okay. us the 11th month delivery price. Okay. Just wanted to ask. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wrong way. <clears throat> so now on to the 144th Street Pump Station project. <clears throat> um, if everybody knows, this is a regional pump station that will accept a waste from the Hills of Shannon area. So we'll be able to decommission that uh, pump station um, and make convert it to gravity. And we'll also have the ability, not part of the project, but we'll have the ability to decommission the McDonald's and the Platte Valley pump stations. This will also serve the Fairview Crossing area. You know, the new development that's going on there on the south side of commercial street across from mcdonald's you know they've got the commercial building going up but there's also several other lots that are going to be developed commercially and a lot of residential uh, multifamily going in there um, and then it will also have the capacity um, in the future when we get the line run south down the forest oaks we'll be able to pick up all that waste um, it'll also open up any other development it'll have capacity for more additional development to the south and to the west of smithville so um, that's the reason that we need this. Um, so we've um, we've been working to get our easements um, from everybody, and we have four that are left. We are having our preliminary hearing um, on Thursday um, with the court. So we'll see where that goes. And I mean, that's just the first hearing, so we're not done yet. But um, this is about a four point three million dollar project plus engineering and right-of-way costs. So um, it's a substantial project and, and it'll give us a lot more capacity and free up a lot of space in our existing system. And that's one of the projects um, that we had recommended for COPs. Um, it's one of the projects that's on tonight for the board's consideration of those COPs. <clears throat> and then on the other project, with our Stonebridge lift station. <clears throat> so, Back in June, um, we ran a drawdown test on the pump station and found that the pumps were only pumping about 30% of what they should be pumping. Um, so there are also several undeveloped lots in the area. Um, and when we rebuild this pump station, we'll be able to pick up um, any uh, waste from any of the undeveloped lots, as well as the uh, school district. They're building their bus barn or their transit facility. Um, that's going to be served by that, um, and we'll be able to eliminate the daycare pump station, which is the, the little green pump station there in the middle with the blue line. Um, that will convert to gravity, and that will feed in there. So this project is also one we would like to recommend that the uh, board consider um, putting into the COP, including in the COP. And this is about a $1.75 million uh, project as well. Um, together, um, both these projects will add a lot of capacity and availability for development um, for the future. Um, it will also take care of several issues that we have with functionally obsolete and at capacity lift stations. The daycare lift station, the Hills of Shannon lift station, the McDonald's pumps, all these pump stations either need to be replaced 
um, or um, they're they're just at capacity. They're they're old and they're at capacity, so they are working. We keep them working, but um, we will be happy to get rid of them. So having a new lift station in both these areas will be a, a big benefit for the city. And then I'm going to turn it over to Hannah to talk about the mm -hmm. COPs. If Chuck, I can't, unless just, you have questions on any of these projects, I do, Chuck. I have a couple uh, on this one right here. Mm -hmm. um, is that going to affect the uh, new car wash? No. Okay. Earlier, thank you. Earlier, the, you talked about the SBR cleaning. Uh, basin number one was cleaned um, internally, right? Can basin so. two and three be cleaned the same way as well? Hold on. I gotta look. <clears throat> so we did do basin one and um, basin two, we actually had clean harbors come in and assist us with it. It was $9,000 uh, and basin three, we had clean harbors help us with that as well. Okay. I thought those were still to be done. Okay. No, no. One and two are totally done. Well, actually three is the cleaning done. So in the report that I gave you, the black numbers were what we were estimating. The red numbers are what the actual cost was. Um, so you can actually see clean harbors um, came in about five hundred dollars less on basin two, and they came in about thousand dollars less on basin three. So, so are, are we able to clean those in the future in in house? Or? We don't have the the pump that lifts it um, high enough, so that's why we had to have clean harbors come in basin one. I think we cleaned last year or the year before. And so it wasn't as much, so they did it by hand um, with okay. buckets and hauled them up. Um, so that wasn't as much of a, pro a process for them. Um, but those basins are 30 feet deep, yeah. and we don't have anything that sucks that far. <laughs> okay. I mean, you, you got a big back, I mean, you stick a big old six-inch hose down there, and it has to have enough suction to pull up that stuff. And basically, the guys get in and help them when they can, um, you know, cleaning and stuff. And a lot of it's workload too, what's going on with other projects yeah. and stuff because, you know, the crew's only available certain times. So to get it done, we don't want to have these basins down too awful long. So we like to get them cleaned and back in service as quickly as possible. Now, it's not an overnight process. It takes um, days before we get all this stuff done. But, yeah, so we will we will do what we can, obviously, to keep costs down. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Would you like to help haul buckets? It's a million dollar, million gallons of sewage. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> I tell you what, the you know, the water lines working in the winter and hauling that stuff out, that's nasty work. <clears throat> you gotta give those guys all the credit in the world to do this stuff for us. Yep. Appreciate it. I'm getting rid of some of these pump stations too, because they I mean the electricity alone on them's five grand. Oh yeah. Year. Well, just per the pump. maintenance on these pumps. I mean, they're they're out. <clears throat> well, we go out and look at every pump at least once a week. But then, um, we those McDonald's, the daycare, Stonebridge, I mean, we are maintaining those like monthly. You know, either a fuse or a pump. I mean, how many pumps have you guys bought? I, I come up every week almost with. Oh, I need another pump. I need another pump. Um, I mean, these are these are probably the worst ones. As the mayor said, anytime we can take a pump offline and and get to gravity, address that in a different way, it's it's to our advantage. Yeah. Um, and as we talked about at the beginning, we have anticipated for a good amount of time the issuance of the COP debt for the project at 144th Street. As we noted, we've been talking about that project for several years. That has morphed and has changed based on needs. Um, and what we're recommending then as well is to add Stonebridge lift station to that, to the project cost to finance that in order to be able to help with cash flow in the, in the utility fund. Um, the issuance of COPs has been anticipated as part of the cash flow budget discussions and rate analysis for the water and wastewater fund. So that's included in those considerations and was included in what we had anticipated in the budget. We didn't issue those in 2023 as we had initially anticipated and have pushed forward. 
Um, but it's going to be necessary from a cash flow perspective to issue that debt at this point in time. And so as Hannah. As Chuck said, Hannah um, is here from Piper Sandler, our financial advisors, and Hannah and Todd have been working with this on this project with us for a very long time too. So um, many of you have not participated in the sell of um, certificates of participation or issuance of debt. So Hannah's going to walk us through that process. Um, what that looks like, the steps that you all have taken and will need to take, and the timeline going forward based on our construction and easement acquisition timeline. All right. Uh, good evening. I'm Hannah Snyder with uh, Piper Sandler, as Cynthia mentioned. Um, and I'll just brief briefly talk about the process and steps um, that will ha happen in order to issue the certificates of participation. Um, so tonight, the initial step would be to approve um, a go-to-market resolution and this resolution just allows the city, um, your financial advisor, us, attorneys, um, and other necessary parties to move forward with steps to get um, the certificates of participation um, started. And then from there, the next big step it, um, would be to get back the project bid on the 144th and Stonebridge lift station. And once we know those bid amounts, we would then finalize the amount of the COPs. Um, and then uh, once we finalize those amounts, those would go into um, documents. The, the main document um, is called the preliminary official statement. Um, and what this document includes is the final amount of the, the COPs. It's gonna have information about the city, about the project. Um, and this document goes out to multiple bond underwriters and investors across the country. Um, they'll have a couple of weeks to review those documents. And then um, the plan is on April 1st to actually have the sale of the COPs. And um, on the day of the sale, all the underwriters will submit their um, bid, including their interest rates and fees. And then the city will simply just select the lowest borrowing costs. Um, so once that happens, um, and the intent is to do that on April 1st, we would then come back to the board and approve the final financing terms, including the final amount, the interest rate, the underwriter fee, um, and a few other terms that go along with the financing. So with that, I'll just pause there and see if you have any questions about the actual process of issuing the COPs. I don't have an actual question, but I know, <clears throat> and through this process, and at what point does the city get its rating? Yeah, so that will be, um, we have that scheduled to do that before we actually receive back the project bids on the two projects. So um, once the go-to-market resolution is approved for tonight, then that's one of the steps that that resolution allows us to move forward with proceeding with. Um, so right now we have that scheduled to um, happen on March 6th um, and we would assist the city with getting information prepared for that and then we would also join them on the call um, on March 6th and then a, a week later the rating agency would send back the rating of the city. And at this time we don't expect any changes from the last bond rating. Um, the city has a very high rating of AA minus. Um, but the COPs would be A plus just due to the annual appropriation of it. So, and as Alderman Wilson indicates, we are rated by bond agencies and that's, that's our, basically our credit rating that then the bond buyers look at and it helps um, determine the interest in and uh, address, excuse me, um, affects our interest rate as well or the, those, those bids of the interest rates, the bond rating call process. It is, as, as Hannah said, it's a call with, and we use standard and four. Yep. We, I was like, Oh wait, we do standard and four. Yep. Um, so we have already begun preparations, um, in-house with both Piper Sandler starting in our finance department, but then also, 
Uh, I know that we work with Gilmore and Bell on this as well. They provide a significant amount of the legal information for the rating call and all of the bond documents. The rating call is actually a situation where we do, we have a conference call with a bond, and it's not a bond, um, a rating, rating reviewer with um, Standard and Poor's, and we go through everything about the community, the things that are occurring in the community, um, development, our sales tax growth, our property tax changes. Um, they are assessing the economic vitality and health of our community to come up with that rating that helps us with selling those bids. We've not done a bond rating until, since 2019, correct? 2019? Yep. Yeah. Correct. So, um, and I'll have an announcement here in the next meeting, but we will have a new finance director on board in time to be able to participate in that call. So, yep. And just to reiterate, the bond rating um, helps determine what the interest rate on the COPs will be. And the city currently does have a, a what we would consider a high rating. So, um, that just helps get the lowest cost of funds for the city. Any other questions for Hannah? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Stand adjourned till seven. Thank you all.